Uh, the first paper I'm aware of on this topic uh, is a couple of years old. It goes back uh, to Kuhlman, who did some work on statistical analyses to sort of figure out some roles based on some statistical, essentially clustering type schemes. Then there was a more direct clustering approach done later. And recently, there was a, there's a guy by the name of Vaidyo, who I think is a Purdue graduate. Maybe some people know him now. Um, he looked at all the permissions that people had, and basically, you get a, uh, each user has their own set of permissions. Those permission sets can be uh, uh, framed as a lattice. And then you do counts over the number of users who have each set of permissions in the lattice. And, that, and then you do a covering over that lattice to figure out what the appropriate set of roles might be that would be representative in the lattice. He also came up with some complexity results that um, described how hard the problem is. And I'm going to talk about more complexity results. I think actually he earlier results in this, in this area. And I'll talk about some of those. And then there was another interesting paper by Zhang, which I think appeared either at CCS or SACMAT this last year, where basically you start out with each user having their permission set as the set of roles, and then you do a series of merge and split operations on those roles until you finally come to some sort of equilibrium, at which point you declare you've discovered a, a unique set of roles. Uh, finally, there's some commercial offerings in the space. They're mostly little, small companies that sort of specialize in, in role management Two companies called Eurekify and Vayu do something very similar to, I think, what we're doing at HP, um, although it's kind of hard to tell from marketing literature what exactly these companies do. And then there's a company called Bridgestream, which basically looks at audit logs of who's accessed what, and from the audit logs constructs a set of viable roles that they, they've looked at. This is an interesting space because if you're aware of what's going on commercially, the whole identity management space is coalescing. A lot of big companies like HP or Bond years, these companies will no longer exist, but will be absorbed into HP, IBM, CA, different companies like that. OK, so that's the background. And what I want to do is review what our approach to this problem is and talk about some known complexity results around this, around this space. OK, so what we do is we take a graph theoretic approach to this. So what we do is we model sort of traditional access control, either as a bipartite graph. You have users on the left, permissions on the right. There's an edge between a user and a permission if that user has that permission. And role-based access control we can think of as a tripartite graph, three layers, where you have this thing of roles in the middle, where roles are, consist of a set of permissions, and you assign users to those roles. So the problem of role discovery is to transform the graph into the left to an equivalent graph on the right, where what I mean by equivalent is if there's a path from left to right in the bipartite graph, the and similarly, if no path exists on the left, no path should exist on the right. And it turns out if you look at this diagram carefully, these two graphs are equivalent in that sense. So the fundamental observation that we've made is that roles are effectively bicliques. So all bicliques are is they're a subset of the, the vertices in the bipartite graph such that they're fully connected. Okay. And, um, and you can see that because on the left here you have these three users connecting into this role. And an equivalent bi-clique, which has the same three users connecting to the same two permissions. So the observation is that in order to transform this bipartite graph to a tripartite graph, all we really have to do is come up with a set of these bicliques, correspondingly roles, that cover exactly all the edges in the original bipartite graph. And if we can come up with a covering, then we've come up with a set of roles that describe the existing access control environment. So there's two, so we want to frame this as an optimization problem. We just don't And there's two sort of optimization problems we might consider here. There could be more as well. But the two obvious ones is the first thing you want to do is minimize the number of roles. In other words, you want to find the smallest by clique cover of this bipartite graph you can. And that's sort of an obvious thing to do. People want to find the minimum number of roles to explain their environment. The second thing you might look at, which is a little bit less intuitive, is to find the smallest number of edges in the resulting tripartite graph. So this problem, this makes sense in some sense, what you're doing is you're managing these connections. You're managing the assignment of roles to permissions, and you're managing the assignment of users to roles. So in some sense, that's 
you're trying to minimize the amount of stuff you have to manage when you're minimizing the number of edges. So in some sense, that's a reasonable kind of thing to, uh, to try to do. And this problem, this minimizing the number of edges in bipartite graphs is actually known in, uh, in the literature as something called edge concentration, which comes up when you're trying to draw graphs for visual if you have many nodes that are connecting to many nodes in another place, you draw their edges instead of as a complete bipartite, you know, all the different lines that go from A to B, you concentrate them into one path and you can draw simpler graphs that way. And of course, with any of these sort of like graph drawing algorithms, they're ultimately related to things like hardware layout and stuff like that. Okay, so what's known about these problems? So, so the minimum bi-cleat cover is MP complete. So this was back in the 70s when, you know, there was a lot of it, literature coming out as, uh, around how various problems were NP-complete, NP what complexity classes they fit in. This is one of many things that was discovered in the late 70s. Uh, then later, it was shown that actually this problem is even harder. In some, it's, it's a particularly hard NP-complete problem. It's hard to even approximate efficiently. So Alina, one of our interns, who's actually an undergrad at Princeton, she wrote her junior thesis on she has a whole series of complexity results which are really interesting. I picked out two of the more interesting ones here. But basically what these, these two results are saying is that this is going to be very hard to solve this problem optimally for arbitrary problems uh, within even a, a reasonable factor of the, the optimal. And then finally, this edge concentration problem was also proved to be MP complete. But as far as we know, there's no results about the uh, approximability of, of, of that problem. So that would be an interesting result in and of itself. All right, so bottom line, it's a hard problem. So being a hard problem, if we're going to try to solve it, we have to use some sort of heuristic solution. And if we're going to use some sort of heuristic solution, the, mo the, the important thing to do here is to derive some kind of lower bounds on how, uh, how good these solutions can be. Um, because if we don't have lower bounds, it's sort, of, it's sort of meaningless to go through and try to develop heuristic solutions because you have no idea how good they are. You have no idea if the heuristic solutions are any good. So one of the first things we did was we looked at lower bound techniques for this problem. Roles, our approach here is to uh, frame this as a max independent set problem. So the idea is as follows. It's relatively straightforward. Supposing I have two edges in my original bipartite graph, A, B, and C, D. So we say that two edges are independent if, first of all, although all those vertices are um, distinct. They're not all the same. And they're independent also if they're not completely connected. The other, so you have these two edges here. There's two more possible edges that could occur in that bipartite graph. It's the, the edge from A to D and the edge from uh, C to B. So as long as all four of those edges don't exist in, the, in this little subset of these four vertices, then those things are, are called independent. So it's pretty obvious that independent edges can't be in the same bi-clique, right? Because if they, if they were in the same bi-clique, they would be completely in the same bi-clique. So if we can find n pairwise independent edges, then we know that there must be at least n bi-cliques in the bi-clique covering of this bipartite graph. So it turns out that that also is an NP-complete problem, which means it's hard. But actually, it turns out that, uh, and I, actually, when I was preparing this talk, I realized I don't know anything about the approximability of this problem. But that would be an interesting question, too. I think this is an approximal problem, but I'm not sure. Um, but basically, we developed some relatively quick heuristics that produce good results that I'll show you later. So the heuristic is, is as follows. It's relatively simple. I'm going to run the following algorithm k times. Now pick K, 100, 1,000, doesn't really matter. Um, what I'm going to do is pick an edge randomly, at random, and I'm going to remove all the dependent edges relative to that one edge from the graph. So that means now I have this one edge, and every other edge in the, in the graph is independent at this point. Uh, and from, this, from the remaining edges, remove all its dependent edges, pick another edge, remove all its independent edges, and I keep going until the graph is empty. At that point, I know I have, say I find n such an, an independent edges, I know that I have at least uh, n by cliques for that, at least n. And by running this k times and picking the, the, the biggest answer over all k times, I get a reasonable approximation to a lower bound on the number of by cliques. 
Okay, bound on the number of...